What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to the Pentagon Challenge and sorry for the gap in uploading, I'll tell you the story now. Um, so currently I've got a new microphone, my microphone broke, those of you who follow me on Twitter will of course know that. I tweeted about it and I actually tweeted about the new microphone today, hopefully if this goes up on the Friday. Um, so yeah, apologies there, I couldn't do anything about that and it wasn't because I rage quit the final, it wasn't because I started destroying my headset or whatever. I guess it was just, you know, wear and tear that comes over time. The headset was like two years old. It was like 16 quid. So the fact that it lasted as long as it did, I'm actually quite surprised with. Uh, the actual ear, like, sound bits still work. You know, I can still hear things through it. But the actual mic just, I guess, decided to break the wire. I don't know, maybe a wire inside the actual connection to the computer broke. I don't know. Uh, but new microphone right here today. So apologies if you hear anything, you know, weird. Maybe blown to, maybe me blowing into the mic or something. I'm still trying to get used to it, of course. I haven't had it for a while. It was something that would just sort of come over time. Uh, but hopefully you'll see a, maybe an improvement of quality, maybe. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, let's do the story. So, uh, what happened was I actually recorded the semi-final and the Champions League final all in one day. And I sort of recorded the end as a bit of a, you know, comical ending. Uh, the reason I played it to black after I sort of swore, it's all because I didn't know how to end the episode. I mentioned this comment to someone, but I didn't know how to really end the episode, so I decided I'll just end it there and sort of see if I get a laugh out of it. And of course, it was a pretty funny ending. Uh, I look back at it, and even I was sort of like, that's... <laughs> you can just imagine, you know, how annoyed you can be. At that point, people just would quit the game. But what I did is I chugged forward, I continued playing, I smashed through, I smashed through with the ideal plan that the next time I would meet you back, next time I would be recording, would be a Champions League final. And things were panning out that way, because I gave myself a day in advance, because I uploaded one episode a day, um... I ended up getting to around the Champions League quarterfinal by the time I uploaded that video. And the actual Champions League quarterfinal was against a team that had beaten us in the final. The Iranian team, um, I don't remember their names, but they we got them in the quarterfinal. And I was like, oh man, I've got to record that. That would be a hell of a game to record. Champions League quarterfinal, the team that undeservedly won it against a very weak, oh, not very weakened, a weakened Suwon team. I was like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta record this. Went to record, my microphone broke. Great. Uh, no episodes pre-recorded of any series. I was like, oh, that's, that's not ideal. So that's what I've been doing. I've waited a few days. I ended up playing that quarterfinal. I just decided, you know, next time I meet you back will be a semi-final. Uh, but, um, I'm glad I sort of waited, you know, I'm glad I actually played that quarterfinal and went to the semifinals because a little, a few things have happened and most notably we're actually South Korean manager now. Uh, so that's, you know, a bit of major news. Um, I'm really happy to have got this job. Uh, despite, you know, I did say in the past that I wanted to, um, you know, I wanted to get a major job, you know, a big job in Europe. And as you can see, the World Cup has been and gone, the 2022 World Cup. And the few jobs that came available, it was like Holland, Spain, Argentina, Brazil, you know, quite a few big nations. And I decided I didn't want to go for Holland. They were a team on a decline. Uh, I applied for Spain, Brazil, Argentina. They all turned me down. They pretty much laughed me off, which isn't great. So, you know, I sort of knew I was putting my place pretty much. I knew where, you know, the sort of teams I could get. And I saw South Korea job. And I was like, that's around the same level as Ghana. So I'm not really stepping up anywhere there. But I'm, comf I'm confident enough that we can actually do well in this Asian Cup coming up. The Asian Cup is the start of 2023. As you see, it starts January 2023. The draw is on December. So I'm confident we can actually win that. I'm very confident with the, with the team South Korea can produce. I don't think this is the strongest team. There are a few people missing. But overall, really, really chuffed with the team they've got here and at my disposal. And if we look at the friendlies I've done so far, I've had three, four games in charge. As you can see, they had a horrible, horrible summer getting battered in the World Cup and in a warm-up match to the World Cup as well. So I've been in charge since then. As you see, I didn't get off to the best start. Lost 3-1 to Belgium. Um, played decently, though. You know, decent performance there. Uh, we beat Vietnam 6-1. Good result there, as you would expect, though. You know, very comfortable, strong performance from the team. Uh, after that, we played Mexico. Uh, lost to them 6-3. Had a weakened defense out. And as a result, it showed as they were 3-0 up. Then we had a man sent off. They got three more. We did score three goals. So that was positive. You know, man sent off. We still dominate in possession. Uh, you know, he was sent off for majority of the game as well. So, really, um, you know, if we maybe had 10 men there and had have stronger defenders, we might have played well against Mexico. So that was positive. Mexico are a good team. One of the best teams in North America. Actually, probably the best team in North America currently based upon their World Cup qualification and where they finished. And then we played Ecuador and we drew 3-3 to them. Uh, this was a decent result again. An all right performance against a, a tough team to come up against. Um, so yeah, I'm happy you're here. We played our stronger team, but a, a, lot of pe a lot of these people are tired currently. You know, they're on their 
mid, basically they're in the middle of their season. A lot of these people are probably at the start, if not just starting their season. So our players had fitness problems, as you can see. Quan Chang Hoon finished the rate, finished the match with 61 conditioning. So it's quite a tough game uh, to, to draw free free there. I was happy with. Uh, we've got Wales coming up. That's our last game before we tick over to the next year. Then we'll have, of course, our warm-up games for the Asian Cup and the actual Asian Cup itself. So hopefully we can get to a final there. If we do get to a final, I will record it. Maybe even a semi-final. Depends how I feel, you know, closer to the time, of course. But, yeah, I'm really I'm really excited to see what I can do with South Korea. I think I can win some trophies here. And, of course, add to the collection I've got already. And hopefully add to that one I've got in the international stage with Spain's under-23s. So that's the news with South Korea. With Suwon, uh, quite a few things have happened. We've gone through some very, very drastic changes, but we're still the same team. We're still performing at the same level. So the league table, we are currently top after 26 league games. The league title is pretty much ours. We are, how many points is that ahead? Uh, six, eight, 18 points ahead, which is about five games. Uh, no, six games in hand. We can win the league. As you can see, currently we're six games away from winning the league. So if we win one more league game, uh, the league's, the league title should be ours. If I've done that maths correctly, that was a bit of a rush maths. Uh, but we have been really good this season again. Only 20 goals conceded. That's, you know, the second place has conceded twice as many goals than us. It's, that's a great stat to have. We've scored the most. We're just a very difficult team to beat. And as I said, some drastic changes have happened to the squad we've sold and brought in quite a few new players and quite a few key players last for the last year and a bit uh, we actually sold so you know it was going to a little bit of an unknown i thought maybe we'd have a bad year this year but it's, it's not been anywhere like that uh, so let's go into the transfers and actually talk about what has happened so uh, the few people we released uh, just weren't really good enough the one major guy to leave was park seong bin who actually came back i decided i was going to look for a new center back as backup and Seong Bin was a bit upset that he wasn't, get, wasn't getting enough game, so he was going to be released. In the end, Seong Bin, you know, in the end, no one else was really out there that I wanted to get. I didn't really want to spend money. So Seong Bin came back into the team. And uh, the fact that he complained he won't get enough first team last time, that hasn't occurred this time around. It's probably because he's played a few more games this time around. Uh, but still, you know, playing around the same games hasn't got that complaint on him. So maybe abusing the system a bit there because, you know, he left and rejoined and suddenly all the problems have disappeared that he's had before. But... Oh well, I'm gonna exploit it. I'm gonna exploit what I can, you know. <laughs> but to the to the major guys to leave, and these are the guys that actually left on a fee. Uh, the first guy to leave was Mats Matsuka, I think it is M Matsuka. I have no idea. 24 years of age, centre back, the Japanese centre back. I decided I didn't need the Japanese centre back. We've actually signed a new Korean centre back, so the foreigner role to me was gonna be wasted if he stayed. So as a result, I signed. I basically got rid of him. So if he went to Turkey for 1.6 million, and really for a year's work to pick up 1.6 million for him, I'm chuffed with. That's a that's a good, you know, that's a good signing. For, that's a good selling for me. You know, it's a good fee to pick up, and he's he's doing decently in in Turkey. So you know, he's a good player. Not got much hype, but good player. So I was happy to pick up 1.6 million there, considering the fact we spent 600k to replace him. So that was really good. Next guy we sold was Raul Julia. It's quite a big one. 23 years of age, so you know now sort of just nearly entering his prime, a few years away from his prime. Sent for 2.9, so I nearly got double his fee, which, uh, well, I didn't actually get near double his fee, but you know I got you know a good amount back for him, and uh, you know he was so crucial for us last year in all competitions. 21 goals, 21 assists, and zero of them from penalties. So he really was crucial to the open play last year. So to sell him, I was quite worried that we weren't going to be able to replace him, or if we could replace him, it wasn't going to be as good. Uh, so he went to 4.6 million to uh, West Brom, and the guy we actually brought in to replace him, who is Korean, for 2.5 million, has done better than him probably. We'll look at his stats in a second. So um, you know we're making money there. And then I decided, you know, I have two new foreigner spots: one who can be Asian, one who can be non-Asian. I decided I was going to spend them on the fullbacks. Uh, we were already strong defensively, but to me, the weakest part of the pitch for us out of all positions on the pitch were the fullback positions. So I decided I'd splash the cash and try and bring in some really good fullbacks. And as a result, a few of them had to leave, of course. Kim Yong hee he left right back for 350k to Jiju. I don't know how well he's playing. I don't really care either. We sold Ko Yo Han, 34 years of age. We actually signed him from Pohang for 1.8 million. So had two good years for us, 300k, but he's an aging player. He's losing his physical stats. Uh, he's losing his technical stats as well a little bit. So to pick up the fee, the fee we did for him was good. And I did, a, I did when we signed him, say that we actually overspent on him. So, you know, 
Uh, to pick up the fee we did, I'm, I'm just happy that we got something out of it. I was willing to sell him on a free if we could. And we also sold a keeper as well, backup keeper, who complained he wasn't happy about staying here. So that's what's happened on the outs. But to the ins, of course, the more interesting side. And the first signing we brought in, this was actually pre-arranged on a pre-contract from April 25, is the first probably North Korean player I've ever signed in the FM, ever. It was Puck Chong Seong, 20 years of age. And this guy is... A monster of a target man. That strength and jumping reach. Oh my god. <laughs> Love a tank to deal with. Not played too much for us. He's a backup player. That is why. But has a good record in the North Korean leagues for April 25. So I decided, you know, I'm going to get him in. You know, it was a free transfer. I couldn't turn him down. So that's what I did. So there's Chong Xiang. Next guy we brought in was Jong Ho from Fenerbahce. 600k. He is a 33-year-old centre-back. I was 32 when I signed him, I believe. Uh, yeah, he was. He just recently turned 33. So... You know, I was happy with the signing for this guy. Again, maybe overpaid for him, but for probably one of the best South Korean defenders there are right now, I couldn't turn that down. It was still, to me, a very good fee. So, And as you can see, he's played incredibly for us. So he's returned back to South Korea for the first time in nearly a decade. And he is, you know, playing like he's not missed. You know, he spent every day of his life there. Next guy was the replacement striker, Jay Wong. 24 years of age. This guy's got really good physical stats, in my opinion. He can play as a target man. We don't play him as that, but he could play as a target man. But not only that, he's got great pace. Finishing is good. Teamwork, work great. Oh, so good. Long shots. Is, oh, he's just a really good player. I'm really happy with this guy. And look at his, look how well he's been playing. The reason I signed him is because, as you can see, he's actually played really well in the past for people in the Clay League Classic. This is the actual league team you go to when you're doing the uh, Korean national service so i decided you know if he's playing well for them and you know po hang aren't going to give him the opportunity i'm going to be the one to give him the opportunity so i spent 2.5 million which again is quite a large fee for someone who's really not you know played a full season for his own club you know being out on loan for the two years for national service i don't really know if people repre you know people if the computer notices that as a good thing or not because it seems like they don't because he's an incredible player 18 goals in 22 games for the team and zero of them are penalties so again he's so crucial to open play and in all competitions He's unstoppable. A really good player. 2.5 million to me is a bargain for how well he's been playing. We already talked about Seong Bim. Uh, that's what we've done. Next guy was the left back, I believe. Abu Alush. Yeah, he is the left back. 25 years of age. He is Jordan from Jordan. Uh, so, as you can see, pretty good player. You know, good attacking, good defensive stats. Pretty decent at defensive stats. Decent mentals, great determination, which is always nice to see. Uh, and also physically, he's pretty sound as well. So overall, I'm happy with this guy. He's playing really well. Um, 3.8 million, maybe overpaid for him yet again. But one of the best left backs who was willing to join our side. So I'm more than happily paid that. Great player for us so far. And the next guy we brought in was the last four in a row we could fill in. Was Sheriff Mohammed from Ismaili. We actually played Ismaili back when we were with Bidfet Wits in the Champions League, African Champions League. But this guy, despite the fact not playing... You know, particularly well for his past two years for Ismaili. Uh, he's been mind-blowingly good for us. 23 games, 3 assists, 7.47 match rating. So good for a fullback. Uh, so, yeah, really chuffed with that. And I think that's a bargain for signing. And the last guy we got was a free transfer from uh, uh, just a backup keeper, Hong Cho. Hong John, sorry, Hong Cho. Hong John, uh, 25 years of age, backup keeper. He's unhappy, he wants to leave the side. He's not getting enough first-team football, blah, blah, blah. He's not a good player. I only brought him in for backup. So why he's complaining, I have no idea. But whatever, you know, he'll do for a backup for the year. And that was the plan. So, whew, a lot of transfers. Let's go into the fixtures. <laughs> uh, so we started off the year. We had a, a testimonial for, for Min Sang Ji. Uh, been here for 10 years now, Sang Ji. So, and he's still a very good, good player for us. Playing even better than his last two years. So really happy with that. But if we look at the league form, we have been incredible so far this season. As you can see, we didn't lose a game at the start of the season until Po Hang when we lost 2-1. This includes, though, great results against Yokohama in the Champions League. We beat a team from... Actually, no, that was an unexpected result. We beat John Buck 5-0. We beat A. Urban 3-0. Uh, we beat Chunnam 5-1. You know, this was the team that were competing with us last year. So we were really good start to the season. It was disappointing to lose to Po Hang. But again, we continued a good run of form. You know, 3-0 there, 2-0 there, 3-1, 4-1 against Daegu great performances yet again you know in the champions league group stage we actually finished top six out of six wins 16 goals scored zero against we were just really really good let's see really really good in the champions league and it showed that i felt we were going to win this league very we're winning champions league very comfortably 
Uh, I don't think that's going to be true, though, as you can see by the quarterfinal results. Uh, the second round results, I should say. We beat Rene, the Chinese Super League team, 3 0 in a home, which is a good result and, you know, really should have put us on our way and helped us win the second leg quite comfortably, but it didn't. In the second leg, we won three, we actually lost, sorry, 3 2. And we were made to work. We were made to really perform and, you know, play at our best to get a result here. So that was really disappointing after a really good Champions League group stage for us to go out there and kind of struggle in the second leg annoyed me it really did our second defeat of the season so it was a hard defeat to take after that big goal scoring match against Seoul I mean Seoul sorry where we beat where John O'Brien scored the winner <laughs> I still love winning when John O'Brien Mikel scores I still love it uh, again good results elsewhere Ichion 4-0 Busan 4-0 beating John Buck 2-0 Pohang still haven't beaten them I didn't beat them in the normal season before we split into the group that was a real shame 3-1 they beat us there just had the better of us this season, I guess. Uh, as you can see, they're still being us again. Uh, it's been a few days since I played this. Uh, Seoul beat them 2-0 in the Cup quarterfinal. Uh, so, put us through to the semi-final of the FA Cup. Uh, big wins against Ulsan, 4-0. And Jiju, 6-0. Uh, then went into our split. We won 2-0 to start that off. We beat Ulsan 3-0 in the semi-final. Putting us through to the FA Cup final. Uh, and then, in the Champions League quarterfinal, we played the team we lost in the final. This was big, big game, and I really wanted to win this one. And as you can see, 2-1 we lost in the first leg. I was shitting it for the final. For the second leg, I mean. <laughs> not the final. We're not, we're, not, we're not there yet. We need to calm down. We're not at the final yet. Uh, but 2-1, I was. I thought we were going to be out. I thought we were halfway out of the tournament. Pohang, we lost two in the middle as well. 2-1, so that didn't do any wonders for my confidence, let alone the team's confidence. Oh, but in the second leg, we bounced back. 4-1, we smashed them. It should have been 4-1 in the final. And look at that. We had a man sent off in the 25th minute. And still, past that point, we scored two goals. <laughs> and they only scored one. How we lost to them in the final, I have no idea. Because this was exactly like the final. We are playing at Su Big Bird Stadium. We should have won it. But we didn't. And uh, so annoying. So, so annoying. But in the past three games, we've beat, uh, we have lost to CL 1-0. We've beaten Shangju 3-1. And in the FA Cup final, we've beaten Jeon Buck 4-2. So... It's been a very, very good performance so far this season. You know, really are hard to beat. We've got Al Ain in the Champions League semi-final, who I uh, United Arab Emirates team. Uh, so I'm confident we can beat this team. Again, not really sure how to shape up against these guys. They've got some good reports going for their team. Uh, but still, you know, you can't really judge anything too much on that. So this has been pretty long. Um... What I may do is I'm going to cut this here, guys. I'm going to end the episode here. We'll have the Champions League semi-finals next leg. It's been such a long update. I decided, you know, I won't, I won't put the league, the games at the end. So this will be it for now, guys. Next time I'll meet you back will be the Champions League semi-final, which we recorded straight after this. Uh, it's been such, such a hectic thing. You know, so much to cram into one update. I didn't even talk about how we did last season. Um, you know, where we won the league with 73 points. Uh, awards, I don't think we picked up any awards, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference. We did pick up Manager of the Year, so that's good for me, of course. Uh, but again, I'm sort of cramming things in. So what I will do is I'll end this here. I'll meet you back for the Champions League semi-final in the next video, which will probably be uploaded tomorrow. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but I don't really want to, you know, have like a 40-50 minute video because I'm cramming so much in. So until then, guys, peace out.